schizophrenia. Oh, hey guys, how's it going? What is schizophrenia? <laughs> Great question, guys. I'll do my best to explain. Schizophrenia is an extremely complicated brain disease that we don't really understand that well. Everything I'm about to describe is simply the framework that I use to interpret my own illness. Before making any decisions based off what I say, cross-check it with a medical professional. If you can trust those fucking quacks! Schizophrenia is characterized by a consistent psychosis that lasts over six months. Psychosis is what we call a positive symptom. It's something that's added to the baseline mental state that happened before the illness onsetted. Positive symptoms include hearing voices. Glad that's, that's not, not a problem, problem for you. you. Yeah, me too. Seeing things that aren't really there. Or believing things that aren't really true. Like, like that, that the, the FBI, FBI is after, after you? you? <laughs> no, that's, that's not a delusion. That's real. They are. Sometimes worse than the positive symptoms of schizophrenia are the negative symptoms. This can manifest as a lack of affect or a lack of volition, which means the person doesn't want to do anything. A negative symptom is something taken away from the baseline state before the illness onset. Right to us before all this started, um, where you were, you know, very, very motivated, very focused. You were finding ways so that you could um, improve your job so that you, I think they talked about you wanting to have a house, family, kids, all, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So that that's that's the person they described. Is that do you still feel like that person now? Not really. We don't know how much of the negative symptoms are innate to the schizophrenic brain and how much are caused by Medications that are supposed to can't trust control the positive symptoms, but don't trust them. One of the negative symptoms that makes treating schizophrenics so difficult is called anosognosia. It's basically the inability to have insight to one's own mental illness. A lot of schizophrenics find it very difficult to accept or believe that they're sick. Around 50% of people with schizophrenia have anosognosia. Wow, wow. That, that sounds terrible. terrible. Yeah, schizophrenia sure sounds bad. I'm glad I don't have that. But, but you, you do. do. Nah, that ain't me. If you're dealing with someone with psychotic symptoms or anosognosia, often nothing that you can say in the logos realm is going to affect what they believe at all. That means really the only thing you can do is empathize with them and say they must be scared and try to understand where they're coming from. Not feeding the delusion, but also accepting that there's really not a lot you can say that's going to convince them out of it. It's a psychotic state that they're in. And even if you could convince them out of believing one delusion, they'll just find another delusion. The human mind is an odd thing. We cling to logic as a false god, but often it has nothing to do with belief and nothing to do with changing one's mind. There's a personality disorder called schizoid personality disorder, and it resembles very closely um, the negative symptoms of schizophrenia for the positive symptoms. So somebody with a flat affect, anhedonia. And when you medicate away all the positive symptoms, but just leave the negative symptoms, a medicated schizophrenic looks a lot like a schizoid person. So anosognosia, avolition, anhedonia, affect, Chances are, if it starts with an A, it's a negative symptom. Well, to treat schizophrenia, the first line of defense, in the Western world at least, is typically antipsychotic. I'm also treated with antipsychotics to help with my flashbacks. You could argue that those flashbacks are kind of like psychosis, and that's why I'm treated with antipsychotics. It's because the flashbacks pull me out of reality. So that's why I hang around schizophrenia a lot. We have something in common in that respect. Also, his first psychotic experience was extremely traumatic for him. Most so. antipsychotics are based around this theory that psychosis is caused by an excess of dopamine. As a result, most antipsychotics block dopamine, and as a result, they also block positive symptoms. Of course, because dopamine is blocked, that makes it a lot harder to focus on things. So it seems like his mood is okay. It's just like he can't do anything, and he can't focus, and he needs to be able to do those things in order to work, so he knows that means he can't work. So that's what's there are a on. bunch of other hypotheses for schizophrenia involving the NDMA receptors and glutathione and such, but honestly, we don't really know. We're getting a little bit closer as time progresses to figuring it out, but it's a puzzle that no one has really cracked at all. There are also a lot of more experimental, very promising ways of treating schizophrenia, but those ways won't make large pharmaceutical companies any money. Schizophrenia is actually on its way to becoming an outdated term because Schizophrenia isn't one disease. It's a series of similar diseases, and all of those diseases function off of different parts of the brain. So what's causing schizophrenia in one person might be an entirely different thing in another person. And that's why some antipsychotics work for some people, and others just don't work for those people at all.
and it presents in different ways for different people. For example, you might just have auditory hallucinations and be able to live more or less a normal life. That's what the hearing voices movement is all about. Those people are schizophrenics with just auditory hallucinations. Although considering they lack delusions and negative symptoms, most of them probably wouldn't identify as schizophrenic or even think that the term schizophrenic is a valid term. And they can live pretty much normal lives because they don't have the delusion aspect of it. But if you just have delusions, for example, it becomes extremely difficult to live a normal life when you might think your employer is trying to kill you, for example. Hopefully in the future, we'll have different terms for the different kinds of schizophrenia. But for now, we use schizophrenia as just kind of a catch-all term. We've got catatonic schizophrenia, where you just lie around all day. Then there's simple schizophrenia, which is kind of like schizoid, but it's more of a continuous degenerate uh, brain process instead of where schizoids are typically born schizoid and they don't really onset schizo be being schizoid at a certain age. And there's childhood schizophrenia. That one's interesting. There are some children who have schizophrenia, but it's actually extremely rare that you'll be schizophrenic as a child. And then there's schizophreniform, which is when you have psychosis for a long time, but under six months. Schizoaffective disorder, where you're schizophrenic, but you're paired with another um, mood disorder. For example, a lot of schizophrenics are uh, diagnosed as schizoaffective bipolar, which means you have schizophrenia and you have bipolar. You can also have depression with psychotic features, which might, uh, you could you go even further into that and say you're schizoaffective uh, depressive type. And then there is schizotypal. We're getting a little esoteric here, but if you have a schizophrenic family member, you're a lot more likely to be schizotypal. Basically, schizotypal is the idea that schizophrenia and normal people there's, it's not really a binary where schizophrenic people are over here and normal people are over here. It's more of a spectrum. And schizotypal people exist within the spectrum where they are kind of turned towards uh, schizophrenia without really being schizophrenic. Those people can um, live normal lives, but they have a lot of schizophrenic tendencies like distrust of others, paranoia, and... Um, magical thinking in the sense that they might believe some some wacky stuff that nobody else believes like some random like some political framework that uh that doesn't exist but they believe it unironically for some reason if you come back to this video in a year everything is going to make a lot more sense in men schizophrenia manifests in their late teens or early 20s while in women you'll often see it manifest in their late 20s this is possibly because estrogen has a bit of a protective effect. This theory is further backed up by the fact that women with low estrogen levels have worse psychosis. 70% of schizophrenics report some kind of sleep disturbance preceding their illness. You'll often find people not sleeping for weeks or months on end uh, before their illness really but again, onset. schizophrenia, it's not one disease, it's multiple diseases, it's different for everybody. There is no one gene that says you're schizophrenic or you're not. It's a very complicated series of at least 14 genes that are involved with psychosis. Regular marijuana use and large doses of psilocybin can also trigger schizophrenia in vulnerable people, or at least surface schizophrenic traits. However, this is a bit of a debated topic as to whether or not mushrooms and weed actually cause schizophrenia because rates of schizophrenia have remained stable even as drug use has increased over time. This may surprise you actually, but the real culprit of triggering psychosis doesn't seem to be magic mushrooms or weed. It seems to be mainly stimulants like Adderall and Vyvanse because of how it interacts with the dopamine receptors in your brain, which is too bad because I really like them. And again, we're getting a little more esoteric here, but I think it's fair to say that some forms of schizophrenia are worsened by neurotoxic substances like black mold. Here's the sink. Uh, as you can see, there is um, there's just some inexplicable blackness uh, that radiates this odd odor. And um, it's, it's actually truly quite disgusting. Uh, I, I often spray it with bleach and uh, scrape the blackness off, but then it... Or heavy metal poisoning, for example. The water's undrinkable, which is very unusual for Canada. But um, as you can see, like, after I filter out the, uh, the water, there's all these weird plastic balls. I mean, I don't know what this is. I think it m might be, like, some kind of metal deposit in pipe. 
So there are many different reasons why someone might develop schizophrenia, but the primary one is genes. If you have an identical twin with schizophrenia, you are 50% likely to get schizophrenia sometime in your lifetime. It's nobody's fault, it's just the genes. Historically, schizophrenics have not been treated too kindly. A um, thousand years ago, if you said you were possessed by God, as schizophrenics often do, they would just burn you at the stake for being a heretic. Even a hundred years ago, one of the prevailing theories for schizophrenia is that you had an overbearing mother, and then they would blame the mother for their son becoming schizophrenic. What's very interesting about how schizophrenia interacts with genes is that it doesn't follow traditional Mendelian inheritance. Basically, both your parents could have schizophrenia, and you might still not get schizophrenia. This further speaks to the complexity of the disease. Some people prefer the term person suffering with schizophrenia instead of the term schizophrenic to distance the person from their mental illness. Personally, I don't care. You can call me whatever you like. Just treat people like me like a human being and cut us some slack if we act weird here and there. We're trying our best here and like everybody else, most of us just want to work in love. There is an incredible amount of stigma around schizophrenia. So many people and families wrestling with schizophrenia stay silent about it. If you break your leg, you'll be surrounded by friends and family who are eager to nurse you back to health, but if you break your brain, you'll find that people drop you and let you rot. A lot of schizophrenic people are driven to homelessness because nobody wants to deal with them. A lot of the homeless people you see muttering to themselves on the street are just suffering with some kind of psychotic illness. Depending on the study, the number of homeless people with some form of schizophrenia ranges from 2% to 60%. Schizophrenics used to be institutionalized for the rest of their lives. Now a lot of those institutions close down and just release the schizophrenics into the public. As of right now, unless you have a large and patient support system, it is very difficult to come out of this illness alive. In Canada, the life cycle of a single schizophrenic costs taxpayers over $2 million. In my opinion, schizophrenia is one of the worst things that can happen to you, and I'm including physical ailments in that diagnosis. It takes this person who often has just entered adulthood, and it strips away their entire life, and it often never gives it back. Uh, schizophrenia? Who are you talking to? Are you sure you don't want to take your meds today? No, I want to live. I want to live. <laughs> Who's laughing? What the fuck is that? Who's laughing? <laughs> <laughs>